Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're seeing my face for the very first time, my name is Abby and this is Mary Shuttle. Here we talk about study abroad, work abroad, immigration, everything, travel. If you like this type of content, feel free to hit the subscribe button below. Turn on your notification bell so you get notified whenever I put on a new video. And with all that being said, let's get into today's video. So welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Federal Skilled Trades Program, FSTP. Now, this stream is not very well known, but it is actually in existence. And this stream is part of the Federal Express Entry stream. Now, I made a video about that, and I'll put that video up here. So if you want to find out more about the Federal Express Entry, I think you should watch that video before watching this one. Now, this particular stream, the Federal Skill Trades Program, is actually carved out and created for people that are handy workers. That is, people that do not re necessarily require a high school certificate to be able to work, handy men people that have gotten um, apprenticeship and used it as a skilled program or a skilled job. Now, if you are a plumber or a mechanic, an electrician, and you did not necessarily go to um, high, higher institution, that is maybe after your secondary school or your high school, that was just it, and then you went for an apprenticeship, then this stream is actually designed for you. So if you have gotten apprenticeship, then you might want to check out the different codes that you can fall under. To be eligible under this stream, you must have two years full-time work experience or part-time work experience for four years, and it must be in the last five years before you create an express entry profile. Now, in order to do all of this, you must ensure that your full-time or part-time work hours is equal to 1,560 hours per year. So you're going to need a total of about 3,120 hours, okay, for the total of work hours that you must have gathered in the past five years before you apply into this stream. Now, you also need an evaluation, a credential evaluation. For your credential evaluation, if you have gained a high school certificate, then you have to evaluate your high school certificate. That adds on point for you, okay? And then if you have gotten training or this particular training in Canada, then you do not require an ECA. So assuming that you gained um, diploma in say welding, in mechanic, and all of those type of skills, then you do not need an ECA just for the fact that you schooled inside of Canada, you're going to need an English test. So either you do any of the English tests I talked about in my previous video. So you're going to need a minimum of band five in speaking and listening, and then a minimum of band four in writing and reading. So that is your minimum band requirement. You're going to need a certificate of qualification. The certificate of qualification can be gotten from Canadian um, qualifying bodies. And these bodies are actually regulated by every territory. So every province and territory has their own regulatory bodies. So you might want to check with that. I'm going to put a screenshot up here and I'll also put a link of where to find this regulatory body. Now, these ones are the ones that are going to regulate, that are in charge of regulating skilled um, trades. 
And if they find you eligible, they will give you a certificate which you can attach to your application. In order to get the certificates, most of the times you're going to be required to write a certification exam inside of Canada. Or you get an employer that employs you and trains you for this particular program or for that particular trade. So assuming you get, you, you, you move into Canada as, uh, and do a skilled education. So you do a diploma course or a certification course in welding or machining or mechanic, any of those trades, that's your skill, that's your certificate you get because after your, your, your program, you're going to be writing an exam. So that certificate is what they call um, certificate of qualification. And then secondly is if your employer trains you and gives you a certificate that they have trained you for that particular um, job role, then you can use that your certificate from your employer and apply for the exam. But in any case, the exam has to be written and you have to get the qualification certificate. That certificate is what you add to your express entry profile. With all of that, your other needed documents are, as always, you're going to need your police clearance. You're also going to need medicals. And then you're going to need your proof of funds. If you are married, you're going to need your marriage certificate as well. You're going to need your, um, if you have children, you're going to need birth certificates for your children. If they are bi biologically yours or if they were adopted, you're going to need the adoption certificate as well. Okay. So any of those, every certification is important. So add it up and then upload it to your, um, if you get drawn, you're going to add that as supporting documents, okay? For your proof of funds, it stands the same, just the same way as you have for the federal skilled worker, except you have a job offer. If you do have a job offer that is still valid as of when you are creating that profile, then you do not need proof of funds. So with all that, I've come to the end of today's video. I hope you stick around for the next one. Bye.